Betsy here, the Frugal Crafter, with a really fun quick tip to share with you. Now, you know, I was doing the gelatin printmaking and making my own permanent plate, and I wished I had something big that I could do full sheets of scrapbook paper with, but, um... Storing a big 12 by 12 jelly plate would be kind of a pain. It would take up a lot of space, and I didn't want to do that. So what I found here was, check this out, a sheet of plumber's gasket. It cost 99 cents. Can you see that? It's pretty bright, but that price tag says 99 cents. Trust me. And it's just basically a thin sheet of rubber, and I bought a bunch of these a few years ago, um, and I die-cut them into different shapes and made rubber stamps with it and use them in my embossing machine for an embossing pad for, like, nestabilities and stuff. And it's just great stuff. And nine Nine cents, nine and nine cents, people, you can't beat that. So I was just kind of seeing if I could use that for a printing plate, because hey, it's rubber, just like a rubber stamp. And so here's a few prints that I just pulled um, while I was quickly experimenting. So I'm gonna show you how to use this. Now you can get this in the plumbing department. Oh, and I printed on the back of hideous scrapbooking paper, and sometimes on top of hideous scrapbooking paper, because um, it's just sitting there, not doing anything, might as well get some use out of it. Since it's all bought and paid for, you might as well, right? All right, so I'm gonna show you how to use it. So, Away we go. I keep all my um, my hideous like scrapbook paper that I'm not going to use for anything in an envelope with my green sneakers envelope templates, and I'll show you how to use those in another video, maybe even today if I'm feeling ambitious. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do is just squirt a little paint on this. Um, I just have it on a piece of plexiglass on my table. I'm not worried about. Um, I won't make it a mess, but you could always, I, I think plexiglass is really the way to go as far as a, um, a surface. If you have like an old picture frame with a scratched like plexiglass, you know, panel in it, buy or buy like a cheap, cheap, cheap poster frame and just take the plexiglass out and you can use that. Um, it works great. And I like to multicolor ink my, um, my plate. And of course you can do this with a jelly plate if, if uh, you have one, but um, I wanted to kind of not spend a lot of money and yet have a really big plate and not have to make another gelatin plate that's going to take up space to store. Um, it's rubber, so you get a really good impression. I have way too much paint on here. Um, maybe not as good as gelatin. Gelatin does give you an excellent impre impression, especially if you're using like leaves and lace and things like that, but this is not too shabby. Um, I'm going to grab a little bubble wrap here and press that down because that gives a really cool impression. I am going to just kind of put this little handmade stencil down. I made that with my stamp maker, a little quatrefoil design. I'm working quickly because my paint's going to dry a little quicker on this than it would on a um, gelatin plate. And then I'm just going to put, uh, actually I think I'll use some sheet music here on this one. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I smudged it. Hopefully that looks cool. We'll see, won't we? Oh, that's kind of a neat, a neat print. I can go over it with another color or leave it. It's already a little more interesting than it was to start out. And if I had a tag handy, I could print that off with a tag. Um, why don't I just grab one? Oh, it's riveting video as always, isn't it? Just grab a tag and stick it on there and we'll get a look. Yeah, that's interesting. I'll probably go over that with something else. Rare that back out, add a little more, add a little more paint, not as much as before. Just give it a little bit of this um, purple, magenta color. Um, so the nice thing is, you've got, you know, you buy those stacks of 180 sheets of paper, at least I do, because I tend to use a lot of paper and it's so much cheaper because it ends up being like two cents a sheet when you buy it on sale. But then you have all those leftovers and what do you do with them? Well, you make envelopes with them or you, you know, you can use it for scrap paper or you can work on the back. But, um, you know, a lot of times you want to get a little bit more use. Here is just a little um, marquee type stencil and I'm going to use one of my paper stencils that I die cut. I'm just going to lay it on the edge there and take this beautiful paper <coughs> not really beautiful no offense no offense to the paper company it is a few years old and kind of cheesy I usually don't like the first print that I do with that but when I take it off I'm left with a really cool pattern kind of tone on tone in the paper and I'm gonna do that on this so this is just a plain has a plain background and I'm just going to uh, print on the back side of this. I don't buy white card stocks. I can always use the backs of the hideous card stocks. Well, I get that pattern. Now I want to switch colors. So I think I'm going to clean this up. What I'm going to do is you can spray water or a little simple green. That's what I clean with my rubber stamps with. I clean that with a mixture of uh, simple green and water. I'm just going to wipe my brayer off. 
If I had a stack of newspaper, I would just like roll it over on that and that would work pretty well. But I want to switch colors pretty drastically, so I just need to get most of that off of there. I'm going to go in with some yellow. I'm going to show you a fun technique using my little homemade um, tools that I learned how to make from UK Marianne. She's a uh, she's really good with a jelly plate. If you want to see some ideas, examples, and tutorials, check out her blog. She's got some really cool ideas. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a couple different things to make marks right on the plate. One thing I'm going to do is grab these little, um, these are fun foam pieces cut with um, decorative scissors. And I'm just going to twist it and make some kind of circles, some scallopy Asian looking circles. Another thing I want to do is I'm going to take some rubber stamps and this I learned from Judy Kins. If you stamp it and you give it a twist, you get a completely different look. <laughs> I've got the back of my uh, mount all uh, messed up, but that's all right. Uh, when you use acrylic paints, you want to make sure that you clean your stamps really immediately. When I turn off that video camera, I'll be cleaning stamps. I can put some texture in that way. And I think I'll just kind of tap this here and there just to break up that pattern a little bit. And maybe even press on something for a little additional texture where I think it's too bold. I can just kind of dab. There. And now I'm going to over overprint this one. So if you're not happy, just give it another coat and see what happens. I got an interesting pattern there. Just, you know, the more you add to it, the better it looks um, in a lot of cases. So now that's kind of dry on there. I'm going to clean that up. This, the paints do dry a lot quicker on this than they would on, um, on the gelatin plate because it has no moisture in it. It's just... It's just rubber. So if you're working in the summer in a dry environment, you want to keep be mindful of that. I'm using this paper just as a cleaner. All right. Actually, it does improve the look of it a little bit. All right. So just wipe off the rest. I want to go back in with a bright color. I want to add. I stamped this a while ago. This stamp is uh, Lost Coast Designs, but I wanted to add some sort of texture to it. it. Just looked a little too plain, just the way it was. So. I'm going to add some texture. Now I can press um, a stencil on there. I can press a texture plate. I have all these um, clay plates that I can use here. Let's see if any of these give a really good design. Let's try this one. I want to press that really good to make sure I make contact. And again, I'll need to clean these off with water. I don't worry about the stencils and acrylic paint because they'll be fine, but my texture plates, I want to make sure I clean those off really well. I've got a really cool texture there. Now let's see how it looks. I think it might be a little, well, let's just see. I think it might cover too much, but I wasn't really, I didn't really have any plans for this card anyway, so let's just experiment and see what we get. Oh, we've got a really cool pattern on there. Um, I could see it as a base of a steampunk card or something. It's just, um, kind of changes the whole look of the piece, which is kind of what's great about this technique. You don't exactly know what you're going to end up with. And I think that's a lot of fun. I think my paint's drying a little bit on me, so I'm going to work quickly. Oh, this is pretty, this is going to be probably pretty ugly because the colors aren't really complimentary, but you know, adds another layer. So, you know, if you're looking for an inexpensive way to do some printmaking, just get an inexpensive sheet of rubber from the hardware store. You can always use it in your embossing fold, your embossing machine, your die cutter as a squish pad for um, with like your stencils or nest abilities, but it works good for this too. Not quite as much detail as with a jelly plate, but easy to store, really cheap, and, um, and definitely a lot of fun. I want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.